Anyway, let's go. Let's let's press on. Yes, uh, Christmas for you, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, a well-needed break from a very tough year for you as Prime Minister. Your toughest yet? Yes, twenty twenty-one has been a very tough year, without question. Um, you would say that the expectations would be that it would be better than twenty twenty, but. Uh, that's the case. I think 2021 was a much more difficult year. Mm -hmm. And uh, for you, it, it was a topsy turvy and uh, your greatest test yet as Prime Minister? Um, I think the pandemic would be everybody's greatest test. This is the worst pandemic we've, we've had in 100 years. Mm -hmm. So it, there's no playbook for it. Uh, Miss it and the is much worse. It has affected people's routine, affected people's outlook, and it has affected the economy, the supply chain, and it is affecting crime. You're, you're seeing an increase in crime all around. So the pandemic is having knock on effects, not from a public health standpoint, but generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy, Prime Minister, it's hard here following you because of the, the, the difficulty with the connection. Are you hearing me, sir? I, I'm hearing you perfectly. Stay, stay right there. Don't move. Stay yes. right there. Don't move. Yes. For 2022, w w what can we expect? I'm optimistic that 2022 will be a much better year. The optimism comes from the robustness of the global economy and the Jamaican economy. Uh, surprisingly, we are showing uh, great signs of recovery, that our, our growth will not just be a V-shaped growth, meaning that on the upside of the growth, we are going up rapidly, but it will be a, a tick, meaning that on the upside of the growth, we will continue to grow even above the point where we fell off in 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the crime scene, that is of so much concern to people, well, I tell you this. The reason why I, 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 you may not be able to, to hear me is that um, I, I just stepped out of a, a, a meeting, which is our National Security Council meeting. Um, and that is the focus of my uh, attention from now to the start of the new year, where we will be coming with new measures and new legislation. Um, the, the, the lack of support for the SOEs have had an impact definitely on our ability to respond. I think a false narrative has been created that there is a, a reliance or an over-reliance on the SOEs. But you know, surprisingly, uh, even a, a great state in the United States like California and San Francisco, uh, they are now looking at implementing a similar strategy to us using SOEs. Mm -hmm. It's a public emergency because the, the crime challenges that we, we face are such that you need some exceptional powers to address them. Um, and we're not proposing that these exceptional powers become the norm or entrenched in our law enforcement response. But there has to be an acknowledgement that what's happening now is over and above the capacity of regular law enforcement. Yes. So we, we, you, you have had a tough year, your toughest yet, the crime problem, the economy, the bright spark. But I said yesterday, Tyrone and I were discussing your, your administration and by extension the country, of course, is facing the triple threat, the C, the triple C threat, crime, COVID and corruption. How badly hurt are you? By the label, the, the perception that you now preside over one of the most corrupt administrations in the history of the country. It must hurt you. Well, of course it does. This, this, this narrative that is being carried, it does. And I've been very careful in my response. Number one, this narrative could be easily dispelled uh, just from the point of view of going back into history and, and dredging up uh, past acts of corruption. Uh, but I don't want to go down that route. It doesn't, it doesn't advance. Uh, I'm certain when we are able to get back on the political campaign, all of this will be 
fleshed out again. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think the, what the public is looking for is how we address it. So yes, there is the political narrative of creating a weapon out of corruption for political purposes. But then there is a real issue of an improved public administration that abhors, rejects, and properly controls the misuse of power and the misuse of public resources. And I think that is what the public really wants to see. How is the government moving towards creating this kind of public bureaucracy that can treat with the misuse of power, undue influence, and misuse of public resources? And I think in all instances that have been brought to public attention, even some which have not been brought to public attention, you would see that I personally have acted and the government general would have acted. But you would have also seen, above any other period, the move by government to put in place the legislation which will create this very robust public bureaucracy against corruption. Mm. The, The other element would be to ensure that these agencies and institutions that have been created that they have the budgetary support and the political support to uh, do the jobs that they have been given statutorily through parliament and otherwise. Yes. And uh, in terms of the new year, uh, we who are in the commentariat of the country, we who do programs like this, the conventional wisdom is that you have a major job to do at the beginning of January, that you'll be revamping your government. Is that likely? Uh, yes, it is likely, and I think it is expected, but I wouldn't give a time. Ah, but it's likely. Yes, and indeed expected, and, and it's necessary. Necessary? Why? Yes, it is, it is necessary. Uh, like any other organization, you have to uh, look at the horizon, see what is coming, look at the, your current situation, the current organization, current deployment of your human resources, and figure out how to change that to be able to respond to what is coming on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And we have been doing that as a cabinet. Yes. And you have a a local election to face early in the new year as well. Well, I would be very reluctant to look at an election in the midst of the pandemic, which is not showing signs that it's going to end. Uh, you know there is a new variant of the virus, and it is threatening to undo all the gains we have made on the public health side and potentially on the economic and social side. So we we have to be very cautious. I wouldn't want to carry the country into uh, an election that could be traction. But bear in mind as well that next year will be our 60th year. I don't believe that we should be going into the celebration of our 60th year anything that could divide the nation. So I think we should be very careful. I think the nation ought to remain focused. We should avoid unnecessary um, exposure and uh, keep our attention on the recovery and uh, celebrating our 60th year, reflecting on the challenges that we have had, the opportunities that we have missed, and to come to a kind of cathartic uh, congealing around the direction forward. But aren't we required by law to have those elections now? They cannot be postponed any any longer. Isn't that so? Uh, my, my understanding is that the legislation can be, be brought to Parliament to have them postponed. Oh, okay. I see. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, you're going to get a break? You're going to take some rest? Well, I did plan to take a break, um, and I did actually move over Kingston, but the work follows me. So <laughs> I'm still in meetings today. Oh, okay, I understand. That is, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Prime ministers are always on the job. Yes, always on call. Always Good. on call. All right, sir. Take Thank care you. of yourself and oh. to your family. Yeah, your wife and children. Get a well, break. They're, and they're, they're all here with me, wondering okay. who am I talking to on the phone. Oh, Lord. All right. 
Go, go, go. Miss Mrs. Holness wanted to tell you hi. Oh, yes. Put her out on the phone. Hi, hi Mrs. Holness. So I knew he was speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the plans for Christmas dinner? Well, I have so much, particularly Andrew's favorite beef. So, <laughs> oh. don't, don't tell him any secret. That, 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 Cliff, you want to know too much. <laughs> <laughs> How does he like the beef, Mrs. Holders? <laughs> it's, it's all right, Cliff. It's all right. Cliff. You want to know too much. <laughs> <laughs> all right take care of yourself prime minister right, thanks for talking the opportunity to wish everyone in jamaica uh, a safe peaceful and merry christmas when it comes remember the true meaning of the season is the hope that the birth of jesus christ gave to humanity and so even though we may not have the material elements of christmas it's the spiritual element of the season that comes so i wish every Jamaican here and abroad a safe, peaceful and happy Christmas when it comes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. <laughs>